Welcome to Chewing the Cud. Fancy seeing you here. We've returned again this week to get you bang up to date in the world of showbiz, giggle some stories from the web, and yes, we haven't forgotten a life lesson for you all. But before all that, let's say a big hi de hi to Lee. Wow, we're, we're keeping up to date with those, those references. Hi de hi. Ho de ho. Hi de ho. Mm. Yeah, because I was, I was hoping you'd say Heidi Ho, oh. which is uh, Mr. Hinky, the Christmas poo from South Park reference. Oh, that's, that's slightly more, more mm. current than Heidi High. From Heidi High, yes. Yeah, OK. I'm bringing you some updates from the showbiz news and my showbiz pals, including a pushy wedding promoter. Mm. And I've been up the internet quicker than a ferret up a drain pipe to bring you stories, including a little, something a little foul. And if you want to grab us, you still can on your social media platforms at The Could TV, our website, which is thecud.tv. And if you want to listen to this gloriousness as a podcast, just search for Chewing The Could. And if you have commented, shared, or clicked like on one of our social media platforms, then your name could be sliding along the screen underneath my animal print bosoms. I'm not saying that this is a week where I destroy you, but... But what exactly? Yeah, okay, maybe saying to prepare yourself to be destroyed, it's time for... Game of the Week. The producer is joining his continental neighbours for a barbecue this evening. He says he likes nothing more than a spit roast with two Germans and getting their hot sausages between his buns. Saucy. Did you know that the fear of tomato sauce is called... Mortusecufobia. I That's not how you say it either. It's mort you you sec you us phobia. Is it? That's still not how you say it. Mort you you sec you us phobia. Yeah, something. Doing like a that. Jamaican accent, it's much easier. <laughs> it's much easier. I think <laughs> Moira Rose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say that's easy for you to say. Clearly, it wasn't. <laughs> I wish it was. Um, but that's the game for this week. We need to decide if these phobias are fact or fiction. My turn to go first, so let's have the first slide, please. Chlorophobia is the fear of darkness. Oh. No, I don't think that's the fear of the band, the darkness. The darkness. Yeah, yeah, I believe in a thing called love. The darkness is my old friend. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Mm-hmm. Is your busy day now at an end? <laughs> yep. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Scary darkiness would Scary be the darkness. one I would like, assume. It's like, put the bloody light on! <laughs> um, uh, I think that is true. Because mm. a chloro sounds like it's uh, occluded, it's like dark. Uh, mm. uh, I don't know. I'm going to go for false because I have a Scooby Doo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, shall we see this right? Is it? It is a phobia. It is so a chlorophobia. A chlorophobia. A chlorophobia. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, point to me. Okay. Okay. I, I have a feeling that I'm not going to do well today. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, abaphobia is the fear of fathers. Abaphobia. No, I don't. It's not. Is it not? No, because it's something else, but I can't remember what it is. <laughs> it's the fear of, of 1970s disco bands. Yeah, <laughs> yes. it's the uh, fear of fathers is Daddy Scarus. <laughs> Daddy Scarus, that's a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and the name of a dinosaur. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm go I'm going to go with false. You're going to go with false? Yeah. I'm also going to go with false. Okay, let us see. Is it's a fake. Oh, oh, is it a made up one? I think it is. Uh, yes, completely I, in we're being told in, in our ears it's completely made up and yeah. it's nothing to do with ABBA at all. Oh. Okay, shall we have a look at the next one then? Aglorophobia is the fear of pain. Mm. Oh. See, I think that's, a, I don't think that's right. I think that's something it, else. Aglorophobia. I think that's a fear of glory holes. Do you? Mm. So you don't do your, your, your tilty head wobble at me, knowing that you know things. Um, <laughs> I don't know. To quote, to quote, to quote even, mm -hmm. Madonna, there's a certain satisfaction in a little bit of pain. There is. Mm. Or oh, quite a bit. I'm, I'm going to say, because um, uh, I completely forgot what it was in the first place, um, so I'm going to say true. Okay, shall we have a look? <laughs> it's a phobia. It is. 
Yes. Oh, don't oh. don't punch me in the face. I've got algophobia. <laughs> is, that what, is that legitimately what you can say to people? Okay. You, say, you could legitimately ask people not to punch you in the face. face. But if you've got that <laughs> on, on, a, on a small card a small that you card. can get out of your wallet and hand them. <laughs> Please don't punch me in the face. <laughs> yeah, I've got I'm this. really scared. <laughs> yeah. Like people that have got IBS that need to go to the toilet. Um, okay. <laughs> let's let's whop one up. Um, oh, Alacatrophobia is the fear of chickens. Mm. Both the feathered variety and the young homosexuals. <laughs> and for anybody that didn't grow up in the 90s, um, that's what we used to call twinks. <laughs> I'm so old. Um, um, I, I, um, I wouldn't... Oh. Oh, well, well, I'm thinking that it is the fear of chickens. No, I'm going to say no. It would be like poulet phobia or... <laughs> poulet phobia. That's French for chicken. <laughs> I thought you said poo phobia, no, which is just a French that's phobia. That's something completely different. <laughs> I'm going to say it's not. It's not a fear of chickens. We have a look. It is. It is. It is. Oh. Where did they come up with these? Because doesn't, there's nothing, nothing in that that would lead you to believe that there's anything to be chickens in it. Well, it's got an O four O in it, so it tends to mean it's a, a thing. Yeah, like there's nothing that says that well, you would think, oh, chicken. Like, if it said... <laughs> if it said... It's a cluck Yeah, then, then you would kind of have a bit of... Ooh! Are we going to do another one of this where I'm failing horrendously? So, Fernandophobia is the fear of ferns and bracken. Oh, I don't believe that. But, you see, this has what you were expecting for chickens <laughs> in it, which was fun. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be a little bit cleverer than that. I just like saying the actual word um, and phobia at the end. Um, I'm going to say no. And I'm going to say it is. OK. Shall we see? It's fake. It's fake. I was right. You were. I were. What's what? You were. I <laughs> were. What's the fear of failure? What's that called? Just me. Um, <laughs> let's see. Let's see where we're up to points wise. Let's go to the gallery and see. Ooh, oh, so I've I've got two and you've got four. 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 Have they got that right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not questioning your Completely own surprised at that. I didn't <laughs> no idea whatsoever. Um, shall we? Shall we have another one that says I'm on a roll? Yes. Why not? Papaphobia is the fear of the Pope. Papaphobia mm. sounds like a pizza restaurant <laughs> for people that are scared of pizza. <laughs> Papaphobia. If you say, see, like other games that we've done where we've like given it an accent, it sounds more authentic. So uh -huh. if you do it in an Italian accent, please don't do your Italian accent. I'm, I'm having. I'm going to have to. Papaphobia. It sounds. <laughs> it sounds like Luigi from from Mario. Mario. <laughs> He's saying it. Um, anyway, question. What's the answer to it? No, the answer's no, it's not true. I don't think it's true. No. 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 Oh, it is a phobia of the Pope. Oh, it is! Because do, do they call the Pope Papa? They, they call him a lot of things. <laughs> Are you scared that you're going to upset the Pope? Uh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> so let's... <laughs> OK. Yeah, there was, a, there, was, there was a joke there that wasn't appropriate, so I'm not, I'm not going to let it out. Xantophobia is the fear of yellow. Um... Um... I'm saying it is the fear of yellow. Uh... Putting my cards out there straight away, it is. I'm going to say no. I think it's the fear of... Photocopies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we see? It is the phobia. Oh. Ooh. Where do they come up with this? This gubbins. This gubbins. This gubbins. They're, la they're Latin, I don't know. Okay. Shall we, shall we do one more? Okay, go on then. One more. Go on, blob up one more. Pythagorophobia is the fear of triangles. Well, Pythagoras, mm -hmm. that is about triangles and shapes and stuff, isn't it? Is it? Pythagoras. 
silence from the gallery is like, whatever. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're brainy, you brainy person to talk yourself out of that one. I'm going to say it's true. <laughs> and I'm also going to say it's true. <laughs> Oh, it's not true. No. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, sh shall we? Shall we see who who, who, who is triumphant? This who week? is triumphant? Yes. Shall we? Triumph. It's four to Lee, three to Mike. Uh, so you have one. I have one. I've redeemed myself this week. Yes. Well, you say redeemed. You've won one. Yeah. I wouldn't say redeem is the right word. Yeah. Well. Anyway, still to come, we are bringing you the new epic life lesson. Well, slap me silly with a rather large kipper. Coming up next, it's Lee with the showbiz. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. We're at time again where everyone gets a little too excited as we hot foot it over to Lee with the showbiz news. It's never good when you get too overexcited, is it? It's never good. I get a little bit hot under the collar. Mm, things other just pet, happen too places. soon yeah. and then it spoils it for everyone. Everyone? Mm, yeah. Let's do some showbiz. Yeah. yeah. So, exes. Is it okay to stay friends with your exes or not? I think if you both agree that it was okay to, and it was the right time to end, then you can be friends with exes. I've, I've got some, some really good friends that are exes. What about if your ex wants to plan your wedding with your new partner? Is that a goer or is that a get out, you freak? Okay, so if anyone would like to become my new partner, please let me know, um, so I can have that issue. Um, I, I think if you're really good friends with them and they want to help you and you trust them and it just it fizzled out rather than ended in an explosion, Ooh. I can't see a problem with it. Well, um, that famous consciously uncoupling couple, Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin from Coldplay, mm. apparently they're still friends with each other okay. in, cool. in life because they've got kids. However, he's been dating Dakota Johnson, the actress, for a few years. And um, what, what does uh, Dakota Johnson do? She's an actress. In what? Films. <laughs> oh, okay. That, that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh. Was she anything I've seen? <laughs> um, she was in the rumpety pumpety moisture seat making um, sort of. Oh, I'm going to smack you, and you're going to get get off on it. What are those films called? Sh Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, Fifty Shades of Grey. I yes. was thinking you've been going through my internet history. <laughs> <again>. All went. <laughs> all went. Give us a clue, then. It's a book. It's a film. Um, so yeah, he's <laughs> he's been. <laughs> it's naughty film. Oh, oh, oh. He's been dating her for quite a while, and they're planning on getting married. Okay. But Gwyneth wants to plan the wedding for them. Oh. And they're, they're not particularly keen because not when, when she's not kind of like steaming her vajayjay mm -hmm. and making candles that smell like her vajayjay, uh -huh. she's being a little bit overpowering. And they're trying to find a way of, to say, that's really nice. But no. But please don't. Um, but um, apparently, I, I believe the phrase that they're looking for is restraining order. Restraining order. And, and a tag that beeps if you come anywhere near. Yeah, so she, she's offered to organise the entire thing for them. Okay. Which... We... I mean, it's a nice gesture. It's a nice gesture, but it's a bit odd. Well... Arrange the wedding for your ex-husband. Yeah, well... And his wife. That... Have you ever seen... The, the, I'm sure there's a film with J Mother-in-Law where Jane Fonda tries to sabotage a wedding. Monster-in-Law. Monster-in-Law. Yes, because it, it's got J-Lo in it. Yes. Yes, and she can act in that. In that oh, yeah, quite, can't. you know, no, no. But that leaves you open to all sorts of things. If you don't particularly like the person that your ex-husband is getting married to, mm -hmm. that's, that's a recipe for a laxative wedding cake, that, isn't it? <laughs> It is, isn't it? True, well and truly. <laughs> because they're getting married in a joke shop. <laughs> yeah. No, you'd make it and fill it with laxatives for a, like for the wedding breakfast. You'd go, oh, I've made some scrambled eggs for you. Why does it taste funny and grainy? No, just get it shoveled down, yeah. Ten minutes later, poop everywhere. Um, but that's just me. Um, <laughs> so they're, You've they're trying about that too much. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, they're, so they're trying to kind of think of ways that they can let her down gently um, by kind of like asking her to do the 
wedding dinner beforehand. Mm -hmm. But apparently she's not giving up without a fight. She is determined that she's going to do it. Even to the fact that she's going to do a surprise wedding. She's thinking of doing a surprise wedding for them. It's not a surprise now, because obviously they've watched this and, and they'll know all about it. I don't think it's a good idea. Well, not if, not if the bride and groom aren't up for it. No. I mean, if... If you've got a really good friendship and you want to do that sort of thing, then go for it. Just for JJ scented candles everywhere. Maybe she'll do one of of, of her for JJ. So Dakota, whatever. Dakota's for JJ. Yeah, maybe she'll go in there secretly scrape some That's some smells out at night. And... <laughs> <laughs> she'll obviously she'll obviously know what Chris Martin's tallywacker smells like. She could perhaps. Well, she might not. Well, she was married to him. Doesn't mean she smelt it. Okay. Um, anyway, let's move <laughs> on from that. So, bit of bit of Luke Evans news mm. next. We've got a no, picture no. of him. His top seems to have fallen off. That's a, a horrible shame. But his trousers seem to have remained. Yeah. Yeah. Although they seem to be sliding down a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, so he has confirmed that he's going to reprise his role as Gaston oh. from Beauty and the Beast. So they're going to do an offshoot of Beauty and the Beast oh, really? called Little Town. Were you sniggering at offshoot? Yes, I was sniggering offshoot. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it! I saw it in his face as soon as he did it. So, he is going to be starring in a spin-off of Beauty and the Beast. It's going to be called The Little Town, which okay. is reference to, you know, the beginning of the film when she's singing, Belly's singing, and she's going through the town of, mm -hmm. of where they live. So it will also see the return of Joss Gad, who played Le Fou Ooh. in Beauty and the Beast, who was, although it wasn't completely stated that he was gay, mm -hmm. it was insinuated that yeah. he was gay. Um, it's a bit of homoeroticism between homoeroticism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you only kind of work, you kind of th sat through the film thinking, ooh, is that, is, ooh, certain scenes you mm -hmm. thought, oh, that, yeah, blah, 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 blah. he's getting a bit like that. Yeah, um, well, we've all had a bit of a, uh, we've all had a little bit of that. Um, and what, you kind of only really realise at the very sort of like few seconds of the film when they're all dancing in the ballroom mm -hmm. and he ends up dancing with Another gentleman. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, because it's based on characters, the original characters, they have a bit of leeway to kind of go different with the stories. Okay. So I'm not sure whether this is going to be an actual film mm -hmm. or a TV series. Okay. Will he be having his top off? Which one? Le Fou Le... or Gaston? Gaston. One would imagine that Gaston would, would have his shirt off. Good. I shall watch it then. Yeah. And... and you know, Luke Evans can actually genuinely sing in real and life. He can, and he can act as well. Mm. But he's, he, he released he an album, didn't he? Well, so. Before the Rona hit, he released an album of cover versions. Did he really? Mm. Oh. He sang a share. He sang share. He sang share. Not sang her. But he sang <laughs> one of her <laughs> songs. Sure. It wasn't. I think he's. I can't remember which one. It, I'm going to say it. Turn back time because that's the only share song I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, show he did. Show me heaven from. Thingy thing, yeah. Thingy my thing. Um, yeah, so yeah, looking forward to that. <laughs> oh, hang on a sec. I, oh. Bad oh, position. Hello, studio. Oh! No, this is this is my natural. All right, it was turn back time. It was turn back time. Was that it? That shares. Luke Evans sang. Yes. I could turn back <laughs> Indeed, now. yes. In that voice. In that exact voice. And now, now they're just heavy panting. So. Oh, ooh. Disinfect it. Right, last little bit. Now this, this got my interest. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that Eminem, the yeah. rapper, not the chocolatey not, treat. Not, not the chocolatey <laughs> treat. They now do a bar. The, oh, do they? Yeah, a little bar. Oh, forget that. Let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. He went out with Mariah Carey for six months in 2001. Wow, I one never, of them was slumming it. Uh, <laughs> I never realised yeah. this yeah. at all. Um, however, he's got a little bit of a nerve on at the moment. He's a little bit anxious because she's writing a book. She's writing her autobiography. Is she writing it? Is it going to be in crayon? Well, a, like a lot of these celebrities, I think it involves them lying on a chaise long, eating chocolates, going, and then that happened, and then that <laughs> happened, <laughs> and then somebody else writing it down. We've got a picture of them here. I don't think that's them genuinely together. I think somebody okay. superimposed it. He's not very happy, though. He's not very happy because of his nets. <laughs> his nets are a state. <laughs> the proper date. I know, he needs to get them down for what do we, what do we think of What do we think of Eminem with a beard? I, you see, I, I'm a massive fan of Eminem. 
Eminem, Eminem. Eminem. Do, do, be, do, do. Wait, what's your favourite Eminem track? Oh, no, not his music or his politics. Right? Oh, it's, it's, just it's, him? It's, yeah. Okay. A little bit of rough. Do you know what? There, he looks like a bit like a masculine Rylan. She is writing her autobiography. It's going to be called The Meaning of Mariah Carey. And he's terrified that she's going to spill the details. The Meaning of Mariah... I'm sorry. <laughs> Why, why would you not call it that? The meaning of Mariah Carey. Yeah. The, what yeah. is her meaning? Why? Page one. There isn't one. Oh, the lambs out there will be, will be unhappy. The, there's a book for that, Lambs to the Slaughter. Oh, Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. Silence, bring in Silence of the Lambs. Well, please. listen, the reason he's, he's scared mm -hmm. is because... How can I put this? He's into pegging. No, he, he, when he and Mariah... Yep got it on in a romantic fashion, mm -hmm. he finished much quicker mm -hmm. than she did. Okay, so the thing is, why is he now nervous? Because we now all know about it. Yeah, but if she's going to put it in great detail, okay, like, you know, minute, de minute detail, okay. then, yeah. So, um, it, but apparently he's already kind of covered it in a track, one of his, <laughs> one of his rapping tracks. Said covered it. <laughs> and now he's giggling. We're talking like about, a child. about jism and, and then he said covered it. Sorry. Yeah. So um, apparently in, in his song, song, his track, The Warning, we might have to bleep some of this out. Okay. Okay. So he rapped, listen, girly, surely you don't want me to talk about how I nutted early because I ejaculated prematurely and bust all over your belly. Okay. Romantic. And that is the end. Not prematurely. Of the showbiz news. Thank you, Lee. I'm still a little bit concerned of what's going to be coming up in our next life lesson. Coming up after the break, it's Mike's Buzz. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the God. Now it's time for the man who recently learned that a Prince Albert was also the name of a person. <laughs> Foolish. It's Mike in the Buzz. <laughs> Yeah, I had no idea that it was actually a person. Really? Yeah. That it was just a, I just a, a ring it was a through your piercing. Gentleman's piercing. Gentleman's piercing. Yes. An intimate piercing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In your gentlemanly area. Oh. But let's keep this a little bit classy now, shall we? Mm, try. Okay. With the recent story on the internet of a man who's had a new penis grown on his arm. <laughs> okay. Does it have a Prince Albert? Uh, no, it doesn't. No, OK. Why, Mike? Why has he had a new penis grown on his arm? Um, he, he unfortunately had an infection that meant he lost um, the use of, well, his penis. Um, his testicles were OK. 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 And so doctors in... The... <laughs> this is serious news, Lee. <laughs> This gentleman's a, m a medical marvel after a, a <laughs> terrible tragedy. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, OK. I'm g right, serious. Yes. So, University College London Hospital <laughs> has um, grown this, this penis, made from his own skin, on his arm as it was growing, so that he can have it reattached. I like how it's pixelated. Is that, all, is that what it looks like in real life? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it looks like. It's not that... No, it's actually pixelated, Lee. OK. Um, okay. Uh, because we can't show pictures of penises on TV. We can. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that kind of show, Lee. OK. So, so his own member, member yeah. fell off. It, it, it had to be removed. Had to be it removed. Because well. it was unwell. It was unwell. <laughs> <laughs> this is not funny. It's um, not but funny. His, no, you're right. But his testicles were fine. Testicles were fine. So they create... But how did they, how did they create a penis? Um, the, they, oh, have my created... <laughs> <laughs> they, they created it out of skin grafts. Oh, OK. And, and complicated surgeries of getting blood flow in there. And because you've got lots of veins in your arm... Mm. Checking. It's like, could I fit one there? Could I go on there? <laughs> Under all the fat. Um, <laughs> they, they basically managed to get it to grow there and as it heals. And then once it's finished healing and sealing together... OK. ..they can attach it. And did he walk around with it like Just, that all the time, yeah. with his sleeves rolled up? He actually said it was actually quite fun. Um, conversation starter. <laughs> it's a conversation starter. When people go to shake your hand, if you go with the wrong hand, you go, hi. Oh, sorry, that's my penis. Oh! Was he... 
Oh, I, uh, no, this, I've got questions. No, ask the questions. questions. Ask the questions because the viewers will be asking the same ones. So, well, they probably did it won't. look? <laughs> like, was it like just a tube of skin uh -huh. that they modelled into a penis afterwards, so they, or they did it look like a penis on his arm? It looked like a penis on his arm with like a head and everything. Mm -hmm. How do you know, Perv? <laughs> We, we can't show all the pictures. Can we not? TV. But you've looked at them, haven't you? I have seen the pictures. It's very impressive. Is it? It's very impressive. Where where would one go about getting one of these? <laughs> London. London. So first okay. of all, you have to get sepsis. Oh. And have to have your penis removed. Oh, I don't really want to do that. Uh, no. Um, but he's had no penis since 2004. Oh. So he'll be quite happy to get it back. He's 43. Okay. And he's quite happy to, to be regaining a member. Regaining a member. Well, uh, every congratulations to him and his new penis. Yes. <laughs> May they have many hours of happiness together. Uh, <laughs> so you did that. See, I did that, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so we, we've spoken about a medical marvel about a penis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're going to talk about what's its everyone's favourite crisp. A crisp. crisp. Right, OK. What did you think I meant by what? I don't know, it was another penis reference. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no why, why would I make anything dirty about the lovely no. fun time crisps? No, no. Well, Apart so what, what... from this gentleman who decided to stick 114 up his bottom. <laughs> <laughs> OK, what's the story behind that one, then? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's quite clear. Did um... he have a hungry bum? <laughs> Like a yawning hippo. <laughs> <laughs> and the only thing that got satisfied was what's it? Um, so this gentleman is called Alan, and he's from Crew. Alan from Crew. Alan from Crew. Um, who basically tweeted that he'd put the 114 what's it's up his bum because his mum told him to. <laughs> <laughs> Did he come downstairs? <laughs> Go. <laughs> I've got 114 rocks, it's up my bum, I'm not to do. Well, you can put it on the internet, that's for a start. <laughs> <laughs> um, he said he was telling his mum about how he'd been to the garden centre and bought a new shovel and quite dull things. Um, and basically, she, he reckoned that he might, she must have had a fancy man round. Because he, she basically told him to stick him up his... And so did. <laughs> mum, I've got these what's it's. Oh, shove them up, yeah. All right, Mum. How old was he again? <laughs> he doesn't look like a child on that photograph. 46. Um, he said it was, it was tricky because the first one's just crumbled in his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> when, when did he reach a point where they were going in a hole? <laughs> Somewhere between, like, the first few and 114. The final <laughs> your one! Question, your oh, question, <laughs> the question is, did it go in a hole? My question is, 114? Yeah! It's only, like, 30 in a pack. Well, yeah, there are, aren't there? Unless you have, like, a giant family-sized pack of what's it? <laughs> Again, who's got the time to put 140 <laughs> what's it's at your book? Alan, 47. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if his trumps smell cheesy afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I've got questions about lubricant because what's it's a dry and powdery? They are. That's not going to tickle. Do, do, you <laughs> do you think? Do you think his? Do you think his bumhole sort of accepted them? In <laughs> going, oh, I love what. <laughs> <laughs> Once you pop, you can't stop. That's Pringles. <laughs> oh, yeah, and a whole different story about a Pringle can. Okay, but if someone catches your eye on the internet. Why not share it with us? Just look for The Cud TV on all the usual social platforms. Someone who's taken the time to contact us is Mrs. Belinda Mycock, and she sent us this message. Dear Chewing the Cud, Is drilling for oil really boring? Yours, Belinda Mycock. <laughs> is, is that a sexual reference? No, it's not. Not everything's about sex, Lee. <laughs> We've had some lovely stories I'm so, I'm so... about a man with a medical marvel, the man with a bag of crisps, and lovely, it's all about sex. I don't, I don't understand modern day. Is, is drilling for oil really boring, mm. as in really dull, or is it really boring... As in digging oh. the ground. Oh, yeah. I get it now. Yeah. I thought, oh, I thought she meant, never mind. OK. Well, thank you, Belinda. Where do you stand on drilling, Mike? 
Do, do you like a wide bore from a diamond tip? I'm not that fussy on if it's a diamond tip. That was sexual, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Well done, you. That, that yes. Was... <laughs> yes. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Got that one. <laughs> uh, that brings us quickly on to the story of the week. And this is a fashion story. Now, it's not often that I cover fashion, but this one grabbed me with both hands and went, watch me, look at me now. Oh. And that's a story about, in Sydney, they have a fashion show for ducks. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So this is a story about, in Sydney, they literally dress up ducks in different outfits and give them a parade. Oh. And we have some pictures of them now. Do we? Yes. Let's have a look. So, yeah, so we've got um, ducks in, in dresses and, and round, uh, being rounded up by a, a dog as well. To be fair, mm -hmm. th th they're, they're just kind of a variation of the same sort of outfit, aren't they? Because ducks tend to just like, have one body shape. Uh huh. So. Are you looking for a slutty duck? No, I just think... Are you saying that you wanted to see a duck going down there in skin-tight PVC? <laughs> Dressed like Christina Aguilera from the Dirty video. Yes. Yeah, that's what, what I was after. Can't give me that, I'm not interested. Although I am quite... I'm quite liking the sort of, like, Southern Belle one in blue and white. The blue and white ducks. Yeah, that's quite sweet. Uh, shall we yeah. see if we can order it for you? Yeah, please. Yeah. With, with or without the duck? Crispy. For the dog. <laughs> <laughs> and some pancakes. <laughs> some pancakes. A little bit of seaweed. Yeah, yeah. that'd be great. Um, you're looking at eating a model, there, Lee. Hosin duck. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you're looking at eating those poor little models? Yeah. What, what? <laughs> Just, yeah. No, yeah. no remorse. They've, they've spent the day getting ready, yeah. put on lovely little dresses. So, Modelling their little feet off. It's a dog eat dog going, world. Nom, 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 nom. It's, you know, it's dressed in something nice or be eaten. To be fair... These, these ducks have dressed in something you nice. Know, no, you yeah, still want is. to eat them. Kind of. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I'd be chasing them around with an orange. <laughs> <laughs> walk! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they, they naturally have quite a sissy walk, though, don't they? They kind of, kind of waddle Yeah. I wonder if Jemima Puddle Duck was there. Um, I think she might be dead. She was written a long time ago. Yeah. What about Orville? Orville. Orville's still alive, yes. OK. OK. Well, thanks for that, Mike. No that problem. was um, ducktastic. <laughs> Not saying you should be scared, but you want the big light on, as coming up next is our life lesson. Welcome back. I hope you haven't wolfed all your gypsy creams. It's time for this week's life lesson. Life lessons. Mmm, gypsy Ooh. creams. I know, love a biscuit. Mmm. Yeah, did you get the kitty reference? No. No, it's a song when she's talking about the guy coming in to fix the TV. Okay. Yeah. A uh, shaggy guy in plimp soles came and waggled me Ariel and wolfed me gypsy creams. Oh, okay. Yeah. Niche. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> our life lesson today is something that is probably one of the skills that everybody needs in their lives. So Ooh. there's the things in your life that you need to know. So things like how to... How to do a... <laughs> That too. Uh, how to tie a bow tie. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so. Um, how to how to know when steak is cooked. Oh, with your th really cheeky, cheeky. Cheek. Yeah, when different point. If you touch different points of your face, that should tell oh, you. Use your hand. You use that bit there. What are you doing with that gesture? So you do. You, you squeeze that bit there. Okay. Right, and that's that's rare. Okay. And as you go up, it gets close to well done. Oh, well, I I did the do the face one. Yeah. Like, poking your cheek is soft. Uh-huh. <laughs> that would be rare, then. Yeah. Uh-huh. Your chin is me medium. OK. And then your forehead is well done. <laughs> OK. So, yeah, <laughs> that, that, life le that life lesson. So the, what we need to do, we all need to know, you never know when you're going to need it. All right. Is to make a dog out of a balloon. OK. Mm-hmm. OK. You never know when you're going to need that. I believe you 
I've got a balloon. I have something in between my legs that's giving me great pleasure, yes. I have a balloon. Okay. Let's get him out. Ooh. Ooh. There's some length to it, isn't there? There is some length to a balloon. Now, <laughs> magicians make this look easy, don't they? They do indeed. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's a good camera angle. <laughs> Let's just do 10 minutes of that. <laughs> <laughs> like ASMR. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. We're watching you sleep. <laughs> We're watching <laughs> you. So we have, we have pre-inflated our balloons. Yes. Well, you have, because yes. I don't have enough because air I'm inside me. Because I'm filled with puff. Yeah. Um, so you would, you would get your balloon and you would inflate it. What you need to do is you need to leave a little nubbin at the end, about two or three inches. Of, of is that is that more than two inches? Three? Well, how many inches is that, Mike? Well, in my experience, that's ten inches. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what we're going to do is you're going to turn it so that the little um, balloon nut. belly button end is there. Don't say balloon. It's a balloon. That's exactly what it is. It's a knot on a balloon. It's a yeah, balloon knot. It's, it's a rude word for a bum hole as well. Is it? All right. Um, so then, what you. <laughs> What you're going to do is the first twist is uh -huh. about sort of say that much. That much? Yeah. You're going to twist because and okay. Well, that's gone well so far, hasn't it? I think we. I okay. think we're winning. Then we, we just we, ended we, there. We, we've made a statement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've yeah. Get, twist it properly, right? Okay. So um, that this is going to be the ear. Have you twisted it? Yeah, I've twisted it. Okay, right. But if I let go, it, go, it right. does it. So. so now what you do is you hold the bit that you've twisted. Yeah. Okay. And then, so hold it with your hands and then make a, like, a, like a couple of an inch or so along. Show me an inch. <laughs> How much? Okay, right. Okay, nice. <laughs> so that, yeah, twist that. Uh huh. I think. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> This is going to go so well. It's doing so well. Yeah. It is. Right. So once you've got that, so you have like um, a long bit and a shorter bit. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to fold your balloon towards back on itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, apparently, according to the magicians that I watched on YouTube. Oh. It's okay. I'll retwist. It's okay. It's okay. Oh. Yes. According to the magicians you watch on YouTube. This, this is a tricky... A tricky manoeuvre. Okay. But we'll make it much easier in the in the long run. So, so fold, fold your balloon back in on itself. Yep. Okay. So that bit there, that nubbiny bit there, you're going to get hold of that, mm -hmm. and you're going to twist together. Oh, oh. And you should have two equal size things, lumps. I don't. Haha. -ha. Oh, okay, right. Mine doesn't look like that. <laughs> oh, can you just turn the angle round for, for what you're holding, please? What? If that's holding That's it, better. That, not like that. Other way. Like this way. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I'm, I'm all of a fluster. Right, so that should have made your your head of your, your I, dog. Yeah, I have got head. Okay, heads. right. So, the next oh, bit... Oh, are asymmetrical. Yeah, one's smaller than the other. Yeah. I think that's what As asymmetrical means. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing is you're gonna, we're gonna oh, make yes. like a neck and then twist it there, okay? Okay. Okay. And then you're gonna fold your balloon again. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> so we've made the head. We yeah, we've made the head. Right. So, so we would that, that would be its that would be its neck. Yeah. And then we'd need to do another twist later for a leg, surely. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and then no. you fold it back on itself. <laughs> no, I've got it. Sorry, I've got it. Right. So we right. So we've made the neck. Uh huh. Right. So then you twist there. Yeah. Because that's going to be a leg. Uh huh. Then fold your fold your balloon again. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then twist that. Yep. And that should make, oh, legs. Oh. Oh, like that. Uh -huh. So then you leave a little bit for the body. Yep. And then twist again. Mm -hmm. 
and then... <laughs> so you're here in the gallery scene, twist again like we did last summer. <laughs> <laughs> so then you've made the body, and yeah. then we want to make two legs. Uh-huh. So, um... There you put the legs like that, and then... You've done that before. You're right, I have. Oh, look, you've made, yours is magnificent. All right, let me try and finish mine. So like that, like that. I think. Okay. Right, and then, mm. no, what, that's right. then what do you do? What was that thing you did at the so, end? <laughs> to get the end up, you have to pop the tip in your mouth, give it a gentle suck, and mm. then pull out quickly, so you go. Nothing happens. <laughs> how, how hard do you suck? So just hard enough so you feel it go in your mouth. <laughs> Nothing's happening. <laughs> no, literally. Are you squeezing the tubes on no, the way? No, I'm just, <laughs> you just, just hold. Do you just hold it and suck it? Yeah. Yeah, everybody tune in. <laughs> <laughs> To see me sucking on the end of a balloon. I can't do it. I hope my end's all wet now. It's not gonna happen, I'm afraid. Give it, give it, a, give it a sanitise and I'll see if I, if, it could be the balloon. Give it a sanitise? Sanitise, I don't want your germs. Okay, so shall we see if, because it could be the balloon later. Ah, you've, ah, I see what you've done. What have I done? You've over twisted at the bottom. Oh. So you sh what you do is, because you need your tail to be out. So when Lee said, you've done this before, he's right, I have. Were you a uh, as entertainer <laughs> in a past life? Um, no, but I did do um, a course about it, because your legs are just a little bit here. A course in balloon modeling? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Oh, thank you. Because I've been single for a very, very long time. <laughs> well, let's compare that. <laughs> Mike's perfect. No, the legs are a little bit too short at the back. Oh. That brings us with a crescendo to the end of this week's Cacophony of Giggles. We have enough time to remind you so you don't miss us too much. You can find us on the internet. Just look for the Cud TV on your social platforms and the Cud.tv on our website. And while on our website, have a look at the support section for extra content, including outtakes and how you can get your hands on one of our mugs. We can just squeeze in our picture of the week, which this week comes from Mrs. Chamomile Crackle from Feltwell in Norfolk. And she writes... Dear Chewing the Cud, In recent weeks you have been showing lots of pictures of dicks. To redress the balance, here's a picture of a fanny. Yours, Chamomile Crackle, Mrs. Oh, I said... I do love Fanny. I do, she had some really good recipes. Yeah, I miss Fanny tremendously. Mm. Just gonna feed my dog. It's thirsty. Um, anyway, thank you for watching, and we will see you all again soon. Bye! Bye! <laughs>